All right, yeah, we in this thing. Uh, it's the boy Blackbeard Mirage and Mr. Controversy. Time for a collaboration. Uh, we've been talking about it, and now everything has been set up. You know, the schedule is clear. Um, everybody in the house, you know what I'm saying? Everything is recorded now. Um, everybody's peaceful. So, you know, n no more, you know, just get into this thing. Um, right. So, uh, first, what we're going to do is just, you know, salute everybody and, you know, shout everybody out for uh, coming through. And this is basically a recording. You know, we'd having a conversation on the phone, having a recording. And we have basically 33 topics that we're going to talk about. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to lead the topic, kind of introduce what we're talking about, um, give a background on it. And it's just going to be a real natural conversation. So, you know, it's going to be both formal and informal. The formal aspect is just having a, you know, a um, guideline basically that we could use to keep the conversation on um, direct. But we'll also be informal, you know what I'm saying? Just like some family, you know, having a chit chat, um, you know, sitting on a green box in a neighborhood, you know, or if you some women, you know, at a beauty supply store or something, just chilling or talking or whatever it is you at, um, just real natural. So, you know, first, um, you know, I kind of said my little spirit real quick. We're going to let Mr. Controversy, you know, shout y'all out. Well, you know, when that coming from the man Blackbeard the Assassin, you know, uh, I just like to definitely give a shout out to my boy Blackbeard. You know, we uh, promised that 2008 collaboration, and it is here. The time is here, and we gonna chop it up like no other two people can do it. The tank and the guillotine, and you know, we said that we was gonna combine forces, and unlike the the, the drama that's going on with these bear winches, we have a code. Right. And we follow the mission and the message that we have. Me and Blackbeard, we are very sincere about the message that we're trying to spread. And we are uh, we are relentless. And, and, you know, I'm ready to get jump right in it, Blackbeard. Ready to jump in, brother. Right, exactly, exactly. That's a, um, that's a good introduction into this because, you know, like the brother's saying, you know, the whole point of all this is, is you know, yes, yeah, some of these tapes that we make, you know, seem real hard to some people, but at the end of the day, it's really about, you know, bringing unity, um, bringing all the alpha brothers and the alpha sisters together. That's on some real shit that's just tied to all the fuckery and basically want to just get back to a real natural way of life and even just a, a higher spiritual way of life. Um, so we basically going to pop that off in this and, you know, just some real good energy. And I'm, I'm, I'm real turned up and real ready for this. And I'm real heated for this. So we heat it. So you already see the tank turned up and now the guillotine is sharpened up. So let's go. So So what so what we gonna do is is we gonna say this shit and y'all gonna deal with this shit. You know? Um y'all can research some of the stuff we're gonna drop because as usual, you know, I'm gonna try to give some books and um anything else that can pop to my head and the brother Mr. Controversy is gonna give you what he gives you. So, you know, look up, look up that stuff. That's the homework assignment because we don't want to make this seem like it's just a relaxed entertainment thing. Um, this is really just a um, more of a strategic planning for future success. It's, it's strategic planning for future success. So that's how we want to approach this thing. So the first topic of the this discussion is, is, you know, we go. What I did is I just came up with 33 things that um, a lot of people on so-called YouTube talk about in their videos and um, things that are kind of common that may be in the psyche of so-called black people right now. So what we're going to do is just talk about each of them. Like I said, I'm going to introduce them and then we're going to you know, keep this thing going. So number one, colorism. Only, only black men truly value black female beauty. You are not his standard of beauty. And this, this his I'm talking about is this foreign male standard of beauty. So the first thing we're going to deal with is, is this. This whole concept that black men don't really value black female beauty and the fact that this foreign man has his own standard of beauty. So this is how things go. It's no different in the human. The human kingdom um, is no different in the animal kingdom. You know, every species is going to line up and going to pair up whatever its natural half is. Now, the only thing different, different between us and I would say, you know, the lesser animals is what's called the the animal intellect because humans really aren't even evolved like like a lot of us think we are. Uh, we just have this this certain lower level of cognizance and we can kind of you know choose things. We have a free will, but nevertheless, what this does is it causes us to um, really dive deeper into ego and we start having too many choices. 
and we start doing things that aren't really natural. And one of these unnatural things is, is you got a, a group of women out here that want to go to a foreign group of men that have their own natural standard of beauty um, and want these guys to replace it. So it would be something like wanting a dog to replace um, his you know, female dog with, let's say, a cat. Um, imagine a whole group of cats that started writing books and they had this whole campaign where they was trying to get dogs to stop mating with you know, female dogs and take in cats. So not only would this cause a lot of confusion and, 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 and fuckery, but um, as I was saying earlier, it's very, very unnatural. So, you know, that's kind of my intro to it. what you think about this, Mr. Controversy. Boy, I'm going to tell you, Blackbeard, the way that you broke that down, brother, was, I mean, that was spot on, that description of when you talk about nature and you talk about species, and you got a race of women who are basically, like you said, you did it in your infinite genius, like a cat trying to go to a, a group of cats trying to go to a dog to plead their case to why that dog should throw away their own species of dog and mate with them. Thanks. And, and it defies description that goes totally against nature itself. And you think about that situation with that Amara neglect, uh, Amara neglect, neglect or whatever uh -huh. the fuck her name is. <laughs> you know, you know you, <laughs> I don't give a damn what her name is. Right. But, you know, that, that, that uh, so-called colorism, uh, she tried to make her case about colorism when that white, that, mm -hmm. that uh, Latino DJ basically told mm -hmm. her in her face. Brother, you, know, you want to know something? You want to know something funny real quick? I was yeah. at the barbershop early and I saw a commercial for Burlington Coat Factory. And long story short, guess who was featuring in the commercial? Oh boy. Amara Amara La Negra. But but go ahead, but keep going ahead, but keep going. Oh boy, you know, that is that is something like that, brother, because I was looking at uh Kid Organic when he, he put a uh, uh actual video that she made. And in that video, she's sitting in there. Here's the same woman that's getting bent out of shape and butt hurt because that Latino man told her that you basically ain't the standard of beauty or what we're looking for. And then right in the same breath, she wants to go and talk about colorism against dark-skinned women and call herself an Afro-Latina when, when in that video, she in that video with a white man. Wow. And now you say to yourself, this is what gets them in hot water with people like me and you, Blackbeard. Right. When the hypocrisy, that, that, that what it boils down to is just like me and you are basically getting at, is they are but hurt because the reality is that they're not the standard of beauty for the men that they're kissing the ass of. Nope. White men and non-black men, and then and then to add this in, and because you know, we of course we got people that say that all oh, you know, well you wear a white woman, you know, hairstyle and a weave and all that, and they'll say that that's contributing to you know her being at the lower level of the standard of beauty. But but I'll go to another level. Let's say all these King magazines, all these XXL magazines, all these Playboy magazines, all these CD covers and all this different shit that y'all posing on with the bikinis and all this shit, all the Instagram shit y'all doing. Ain't no so-called black men getting no money from that. So at the end of the day, if once again, now now it's a two it's two sides to that cuz cuz a lot of black men need to probably create these types of businesses so these women could take photos and stuff at their businesses. So I'm not saying that it's just the, the sister's fault, but the point is, is that, you know, we, you can't be going to the Jew who is, let's say, the director of some some rap video. And then, you know, let's say you dark skin and you wondering why when you show it to, let's say, the photo shoot or the, or, the, or, the, or the video tryout, you know, everybody light skin or whatever. It's like these folks got their own standard of beauty, you know, and, and at the end of the day, the only person who really values black female beauty um, is the so-called black man. Now, you're going to have other other ethnic men that may you know, see women of color and they may think that these women are attractive. Um, you know, they, you got that out there. But at the end of the day, when the shit really boils down, like on some real nature type shit, yeah, it's going to come down to people fucking with their own folks. Because let me tell you some shit. 
even in the wild and all that kind of stuff. You know, I've seen the little stories on National Geographic where it'll be the little wolf who raised, you know, the, the little the little coyote baby or, you know, or the horse that raised the fucking the little pig baby. Like every now and then you'll see in the animal kingdom certain, you know, animals, let's say, hanging out and, and raising other animals. But nevertheless, that shit ain't the real reality. And if some pop off in that kingdom that has to do with resources, survival and safety. You better believe that every animal is going to run back to their goddamn side of the field. And this is how I picture that shit. When I was a when, when I was a little boy in school and, and, and I used to be in class and they would show the little African Sahara Desert and all that. Or, or the little water hole in the, um, or the river in the, in the Amazon jungle or something. Something that always stuck out in my mind is I always saw the, the zebras together. I always saw the antelopes together. I always saw the lions together. Um, and I always saw the giraffes together. So basically, I'm seeing that all these different species are using the water hole, and this is what they have in common. But at the same time, they don't, they fucking with their own people, you know. Exactly. So exactly. this is something. Yeah, go ahead. And you know what, Blackbeard, to add to what you said, you know when me and you did those classic masterpieces talking about the black males that lack that killer instinct, them beta males. Right. And you know. When you think about that, that video clip in the front of the video of the Lion Kingdom, and I, I was talking about how the same thing that you just said, where everybody's going to get that water. But the, the, the key word is what you just said. They're in their own species going in that herd to go get that water. Thanks. They're not going to mix up with the hyenas to try to drink water. They're going in a pack with their own species to go get the water. Facts. And the lions, when they're going to try to go after those buffaloes, the lions are grouped up together with the other lions. Yep. And they all understand the separation of the species. They all understand procreation. The only ones, and you know that leads me into what me and you were talking about earlier, out in the real world, when I put them challenges out there for them, all the people to participate in. And me and you, Blackbeard, we put our money where our mouth is. Just today, before me and you got ready to do this collaboration, we saw it for ourselves, and we are thousands of miles apart. Thousands of miles apart. Two different states. And while we were collaborating on the phone, <clears throat> we both, saw bear witches walking with a white man. Facts. Yep, I'll tell them I'll tell them where I was at. Um I was at the mall getting a haircut and when I walked in the mall, one of the first places I saw is this little place that makes little figurine statues. Like a family or somebody may come in there with like a picture or a three dimensional concept and they'll make like a little clay figurine out of it. And guess what clay figurine they had on display in the front? You guessed it, a Negro <laughs> noose neck and bed stench with some pale manky. And then about 15 minutes later, I saw a, um, a, a, a live Negro bed stench, you know, with a so-called white male. So, so yeah. Yeah. And you know, it is, I love it, Blackbeard, where, you know, it like they, that, that cliche says, don't believe your lying eyes. Yep. And you saw it right there while we were on the phone talking. Yep. And and likewise, on my side, I'm out there talking to you on the phone. Mrs. Controversy is in the Walmart getting getting some things out of Walmart. And right there while I'm talking to you, I'm telling you, there's a bad winch right there pushing a, pushing a uh, cart, a grocery cart. And she, no, the white man is pushing the grocery cart. And they're going to bear winch with her natural hair, holding that mixed breed child with, with probably the blue and green eyes that she always wanted. Wow. And I'm sitting here saying to myself, checkmate once again. Checkmate. In the real world, right there while we're on the phone, talking lies. That's sick. And then, me and you, just today, I'm telling you, here's the, 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 white, the white lady that's a lawyer, that's uh, my neighbor, and she's getting dressed up like she's going to a formal event, like some kind of dinner or 
something. She got her hair done and everything. And the next thing you know, right next to her, who has she got right next to her? What race of man? A white man. <laughs> Every time. So what we're going to do is, is um, because see, that's going to be something we're going to address at the end. So what we're going to do now is, is we're going to go to um number two and keep this thing rolling. Let's keep it rolling, bro. So number two. Now, this kind of was hinting, hinting at number one, but we'll briefly go over it one more time. So colorism. Black men actually love black beauty, including love for his own image and love of the image of what he reproduces, i.e. black people. Let me, so what I'm saying here is, is this, on average, my whole life growing up, when I've been around black men, I've never really seen black men demonize their own image, meaning their sales. Um, I've never seen this, you know, black men say things like, man, I can't stand how my beard gets nappy and this shit get itchy and goddamn when I ain't wash my face or something like that, this shit feel like goddamn some, you know, hard carpet or something or, or damn man, um, you know, like, like, man, my skin is, you know, X, Y, and Z or something like that. Or, da, 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 or damn, man. And also, too, like, I saw some bullshit where Cynthia G said something about um, that, that the brothers who have a bald head are trying to be like the white man. <laughs> see, see, this, this silly ass shit, this silly ass shit. Once again, we got pictures of aboriginals. With no hair. I mean, y'all have seen so-called pictures of Egyptians with no hair. But anyway. Just this whole concept that, you know, black men overall love their own beauty. Um, I've never seen black men, you know, want to damage their eyes because they don't like the color. Um, it just I've never seen none of this stuff, you know. Um, so that's kind of what I got on that. You know, what about you? Boy, black men, you, you, you said a mouthful, brother. Because when you brought that point up with Cynthia G, that was a classic right there. When she put her... She put her foot in her mouth so many times, it's too many times to count. And that was one of the big ones right there when she said that the black man is wants to be a white man. The fuck out of here. And, and you have seen so many times that I have deconstructed that whole argument there where I told Cynthia G, wait a minute, Cynthia G, if you want to use this whole point of the black man wanting to be a white man, let, let's, let's look at that. Who is walking around with blonde weaves in their hair. Thanks. Who is doing that, Cindy G? Who is going and spending billions of dollars on green and blue eye contacts? Who's doing that, Cindy G? Uh oh. Is it black men doing that? Uh oh. And I thought she said that the black man wants to be white. He wants to be the white man. So if the black man wants to be the white man, he should be doing things to his appearance to make him turn into a white man. Yep. So, what about the skin bleaching? If the black man wants to be a white man, shouldn't he be spending billions of dollars like these swirling Negro bed wedges bleaching their skin to try to be a white man? I don't see the black man I've never seen it. Man bleaching their skin. Never seen the shit. And then another thing, Black Bear, that gets me too is. When you think of her making an asinine statement that the black man is trying to be the white man, and then you look at who's actually spending money to be the white woman. Uh-oh. <laughs> you cannot find any proof of black men walking around with weeds in their hair like that. Nope. You don't see black men. Black men don't give a damn. You made a perfect point, Black Bill, when you talked about the beards. Black men don't give a damn that their beard is kinky. Nope. We don't give a damn. Just like the readers were saying, black men don't have to change. We don't have to change ourselves to date a non-black person. Nope. We, we, you got the most thuggish ape and savage. And that thug and that ape will walk up to that white girl with his pants hanging off. And he'll spit game to that white girl with that ebonic, the damn illiterate ebonic ass of his. And he don't have no problem pulling a white girl. Do it here in Atlantis all the time. But then you got that WWE fake ass bleached ass bitch who went and bleached her skin. Went and put that fake ass hair in there. The fake ass eye contacts. That... And, and talking like a damn white girl, a valley girl accent, this is the thing for 
when you think of that statement that Chris, that uh, Cynthia G said, it makes her look like a total jackass. When the actual proof, everybody out here knows who is spending billions of dollars hating their cells and their skin color. She's sad, man. And that's the thing that gets me about that, Blackbeard. How you, it's kind of like that one, when I said that when they went out to Chrissy and called her a handmaid and, and called her, uh, you know, all of these names, calling her a mammy. And I'm saying to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The actual definition of a mammy, the actual definition of a handmaid fits you motherfuckers. Right. You bad witches are the exact definition of what you're calling her. You're the ones kissing the white man's ass. You're the ones that don't give a damn about your own race of people. You want the mammies. It, it defies description, brother. Yeah. The hypocrisy and the, the, the ignorant statements that come out of their mouth. So check this out. So we're going to now transition into number three because you kind of hit at something on, something on number three. So number three says the black male lying propaganda. Black men are the masters of giving slash showing love to black women. Examples R&B and old statues of goddesses around the planet to combat the feminist black male bash narratives. What I'm saying here is, is this. There are even certain, you know, narratives put out there that black men, you know, um, you know, are these brutes, you know, don't really know how to love women. Um, have damaged heart chakras, don't know how to care for people, and basically don't have, um, you know, a human sensitive side to basically the different things that are going on in life and death. And this is a complete lie. And one of the things also that's put out here is, is that the so-called black men didn't protect, um, don't protect black women and that, um, we just don't, don't care about them overall. First of all, during the times of what you all call a slavery, which are just prison of war situations. The Aboriginal men, the so-called black men, were fighting the whole time, okay? Uh, just look up the various wars, you know, just go across the Blackbeard playlist. Y'all can easily see the, the, the history that I drop on that. But during this time, you know, the brothers was fighting. Now, I'm not going to go off on it, but the first Negro bed stench tape that I made actually was hitting that during the times of the Civil War, when while these brothers was fighting for freedom, these Negro bed stenches was ghetto gawking and ghetto gurping um, all across the goddamn, you know, United States. But anyway, the point is, is that, you know, these brothers out here are just the masters of showing love. Just look at the R&B industry, how that shit started popping um, in the 80s. And we can even go back, you know, before the R&B, let's say to the um, the 70s and the jazz era and stuff like that. Even going back early to the early 20th century, you know, the, the brothers have always been dropping some kind of music to show their love for the women. Um, now, I would say by the time it got to like the, the, the early 90s, you know, the brothers... You know, had been dealing with that energy for, for, for quite a while that it started simping a little bit because it was another generation that were more of a black up male archetype. So that's kind of why you see, you know, more of a simp aspect or a simp archetype with it now. But prior to that, it was all authentic. You know, like, I, I mean, this is the kind of music I heard my parents playing. You know what I'm saying? Like, the only kind of music I heard growing up were basically some, some black man singing about some damn black woman. You know, um, I mean, just turn to some of these jazz stations, some of these old school stations, like all the Marvin Gaye and all this shit. You know, like who y'all think who y'all think these men were singing about? Like who y'all think were the, the women in their communities that they had relationships with, that they lost their virginities to? That was their first girlfriends, their first wives that influenced these men in the 70s and 80s with this R&B and all this shit. And some of the older people, y'all can, you know, even kind of count and name some of the different people. But the point is, is like, who do you all think were influencing these men? You know, and who do you think these men were talking about? They were talking about so-called black women. Let's take the rappers of today. When these rappers be talking about even, let's say, the so-called trap goddess. Or he's saying, my my girl did some, you know, da 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 It's like, at the end of the day, on average, like, who y'all, who the ethnic background y'all think these men really are talking about? They talking about so-called black women. And then I'm going to say one more thing and I'm going to wrap it up. Just think about these giant monolithic um, statues and stuff around the planet. All these temples of all set. All these different temples that you find in so-called North Africa and throughout the Middle East, especially in the Far East and India and stuff like that, of these different um, statue stones of Parvati and Kali and all these different goddesses. Like, who y'all think was building that shit? It was so-called black men. So it's like they weren't fucking with their women like that. They wouldn't be spending the time doing all that. 
So that's another one of these bullshit ass propagating uh, propaganda ass lies that the guillotine has now just severed. Um, you know, the brothers always been fucking with their women and they always will. So y'all can go ahead and throw that shit away and I'm gonna let the taint run over y'all one time. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, Blackbeard passed the ball to the tank, and I'm telling you, the assassin just, you know, just put it in in a perfect, perfect historical perspective. And you know, they tried all the way back to the birth of a nation. You had this white man coming out here putting this propaganda out there, just like Blackbeard said, like we are some brutes. Like, all we do is go around raping and pillaging and everything like that. And the thing that I find so interesting about it is it goes back to the same thing when I talked about them calling Chrissy a handmaiden and a mammy. The very thing that they're calling her, that's what they are. Yep. And the same thing that the white man was trying to portray the black man as, as a brute, as he's going and raping and pillaging everything. That's what the white man does. Yep. He got and raped and pillaged all through history. And me and Blackbeard both talked about this whole thing with the black on black crime and how uh, basically, you know, you know, and I'm a whole lot more see, like Yeah, because we got a whole thing on that. And see, cause I see, I remember... Because I remember when you dropped that tape. Yes, yeah, so I want you to wait on that one. Because I want, yeah, we got a whole thing on that. I got to back up like David Carroll says. We don't want you get uh -huh. a little fucked up and yeah. get ready to go in the hole. Yeah. I, I got to back it up because we've been in the head yeah. and in the hole on that one right there. Because, yeah, I know that's you, coming down the fight. Because they already throwing rocks at the tank. You know, they see you coming down the street. You know how the little kids are coming <laughs> see throwing rocks and shit because they scared, you know. So, so hold on now. <laughs> Hold on, they they scared on that one now. When they throw rocks at a tank, we both know uh, rocks have no if no effect on a tank. Zero. Zero effect on a tank. So, like I throw those motherfuckers in that damn sixty G the butthurt video, bring it. Yep. Because the one thing about it is the message that me and the man Blackbeard, you know, we're trying to enlighten everybody out there these black up men as well we're yeah. trying to bring the truth and, and Blackbeard is coming at it from a historical perspective and then I come at it from the, the gritty raw perspective in my own way right. so we're basically you know we uh, for everybody out there we constructed all of these points because these were points that we felt passionate about and when you think about this whole situation with uh, going back to the original uh, question, like this birth of a nation, you know, you, you you had this propaganda out just like Blackbeard said, like black men are not capable of romance. We're not capable of any type of uh, caring about the black woman when we are the very men that held up the black woman. All of the years, and we have made love songs about black women. Facts. We have been the ones that appreciated her hips. Facts. We appreciate her ass. Especially back here. Her, her lips, the, the thickness Ooh. of her lips. Especially back here, boy. Her skin tone. Unlike a lot of these people are trying to perpetuate this colorism thing and make it seem like black men give a damn about that, black men don't give a damn. Black men don't give a fuck about that shit, boy. At the end of the day, when black men can, 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 can attest to this, at the end of the day, when a black man sees a black woman down that street, the first thing he's looking at, more than likely, is that ass. Facts. And then he's going to look at that face, and then he's going to look at them hips. He's going to look at, I mean, that's what black men, that's what we care about. We don't give a damn about colorism. Nope. She can, black is nice, and we love it. Love it. We love it. We love her to be chocolate all the way from chocolate all the way to the lightest of the lightest. Yep. And that's the and that's just being a man, period. What men care about. We don't care about things that women care about. We can care less about our beard being scruffy and all of that kind of stuff. We're not gonna go take no damn relaxer. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to straighten our damn <laughs> beard out because we hate the damn beard being in its natural state. Hell no. We don't give a damn about that stuff. You, you, know, you 
So the, it just, it just the, the lies that's been put out against black men and the problem that me and me and both me and Blackbeard have is the fact that we have a balls to speak up about what's happening in this society. And you got a whole slew of black males out there, these black up men as my boy Blackbeard patented. Thanks. A whole slew of them out here who in the face of total utter disrespect. Okay. So you going right into the next one. So let me introduce the next one and then you can keep going. The 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 outliers. The quote unquote killmonger archetype. The glitch in the false reality slash parallel universe. The alpha black heterosexual male who uses force. So go into that one. Oh yeah, the killmonger archetype. And they go back to what me and you were talking about, Black Beard, about that killer instinct. Yep. The whole black up man, the psychology behind it. And you know what just crossed my mind, Black Beard, was that brother that, that actually was raised up to be a black up man. That brother that signed that contract. Yeah, football. Yeah, that football with Florida and, and that, that uh, ratchet ass mom of his got her fat ass up out the seat and walked off on national TV embarrassing that boy. Sad. And the thing that I was felt so proud about, Blackbeard, I wish I could have talked to that brother. You know, he sounded like a damn idiot with that, that damn Ebonics. I need to straighten that shit up and teach him how to talk some, pop, some <laughs> damn English where people can understand his ass because he sounded ridiculous on that damn TV. <laughs> But, you know, he made us look fucked up on TV. Yeah, he did. He did. And, and I know the white the white people were saying to themselves, what the hell is this motherfucker talking about? <laughs> 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 but that's a topic for a whole other ballgame. Right. But the fact that that brother actually grabbed his balls back after being raised up, me and you both know, Blackbeard, that that boy was raised up to be a black up man. True. He was. We, we know that mother castrated his ass all his life. Damn. And that boy took his balls back and said, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to, I know she raised me up to be a black man. Fuck that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be an alpha male. Right. I'm going to make the decision myself whether she like it or not. Right. And then when you think of the psychology of these black up men out here where you got a Cynthia G., and a crystal and Karen, me and you were talking about that earlier, Blackbeard. How uh, you got these two women in particular, and you got black up males in their comment thread, and they're calling them names. Fifty G calls them beta male self, and you got a beta male self sitting in her comment thread. Like a fool sitting on I mean, ice, it, just like the black up man. It defines description how. You got a woman who talking shit about black men all day, every day, both of them, and you got black men in their comment thread. Congrat- congratulate them. So let me and, and, and agreeing with what they're saying. So let me transition into number five now, because this is something that you put out there, and I want you to just go in on this a little bit more. Mating, white women hating on white men. Where is the video? The equal to black females who publicly shame black men. Oh, 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 oh. Woo, boy, black beard, you said a mouthful of that, brother. That is a deep challenge. Black beard, wasn't that a deep challenge right there, black beard? It just was. I'm telling you, like, when I'm, like, my whole life, like, when I grew up, because I did grow up, you know, in a city where it was like, the, you know, the hood on the south side of Atlanta in Riverdale. And it wasn't really like no white folks out there like that. But when I went to college and because of my education and stuff like that, I was able to go to, you know, a little, little more higher elite areas. And this is when I would start being around Caucasian people a little bit more. Now, I would be with them around them when I was with my parents as a little boy or during my parents business activities. But as far as me as a man individually, that was when I got older, of course, in college. And on average, man, on some real shit from all the white guys that I knew that played football that I was cool with. They used to work out with us. Um, a few of the ones I knew that was in the, the, fr- the fraternities and stuff like that. Um, and just some of my average classmates from the business building and stuff like that. On average, man, these guys are dealing with their own women, man. Um, I mean, that shit just that shit just facts. When I'm in the grocery stores, 
Um, I mean, that shit just is the reality. Um, that's just reality. And you know, Blackbeard, you had the balls to take on the challenge. Oh, yeah. You had the balls to tell the truth of what you see. Yeah. You had that sister that went on with uh, Crystal and Carrington that put that reality right in our face. Right. So, so... And- so let me ask you this, because number five and six both deal with mating, and they both dealing with basically the white female typically choosing the white male and vice versa, and their whole genetic survival in the cold. But what I want to really ask you in more of a question, and then we'll go to number seven, is is why doesn't the why don't we find the videos just like we found with the black females just trashing black men? Like why don't we find those videos? Um, about white females doing that, let's say at the same degree, because you do have some white feminists that do it, but we mean more so at that energy that kind of when we see black females do it. Well, like the Professor Black Truth made a video about that, uh, that when that Amber Phillips went on there calling black men rapists. Wow, yeah. Excellent point. The same point that Mr. Controversy has been pointing out about why are you not seeing white women that are so called feminists? If you're a feminist, why are they not going against white men? Why are they right. not calling out white men then? Right. You see, this is the thing that I'm saying. This is what gets me right here. Black women that get on TV, these swirling bear watches, and they will directly address black men. I don't date black men. And then Rachel Lindsay gets on national TV, the so-called first bachelorette. And it kind of goes back to what you said, Black Bear, when you look at you you know you look at let's look at the white women and let's look at the the, the bachelorette and the bachelors. All both sexes, uh, unanimously, they their own race. All of the white bachelorettes, every single one of them from every season chose a white man. Yeah, every time, man. Every time and that every, shit. And, yeah. And every white man on the bachelorette, every white bachelor, every season chose a white woman. That's a fact. And, so, and that's a fact. And anybody that's out there right now at the sound of me and Blackbeard's voice, I want you to go and like my boy Blackbeard likes to tell you to get, you know, he you know says you go and learn for yourself. You go and he'll give you the book references, but you go and look at it for yourself. And this is a challenge out to everybody that's out there. What me and Blackbeard are talking about you look at all the bachelors and bachelorettes, and in the day of internet now, and the, the day, the age of iPhones and Google, it's no excuse for not being able to fact check what we're talking about right now. Exactly. Everybody out there can go and look at every one of those white bachelorettes and those white bachelors and come back to me and Blackbeard and say, you know what, them motherfuckers are damn right. They are right. They chose white people. And here you go fast forward all the way to 2017. The first black bachelorette. And what the fuck did she choose? A white man. So let's... So let's... Not a man of her own race. So let's transition now into number seven. The black male attacks. Black men are attacked as a collective. What I'm saying here is, is this. Usually when one black male does something, all black men get in trouble. So let's say that there is an, a situation or a crime and uh, the report is that it was a black male with a white shirt and dreads. Um, the locks in his hair. Keyword, they call them dreads. They're locks to us. But anyway, this is the description of the guy. So now every brother that or, or sister even that has locks in their hair that's in the vicinity of this situation, they're going to be bothered by, by, by the police. Um, simply because you, we don't get the, 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 the blessing of being an individual. Um, but see, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way when you do something good. So let's say as a black man, like me, for example, and Mr. Controversy, you know, as we both to tell y'all now, y'all can take that shit to a brother with a GED because we, we college educated now. So, but see, look at how we represent the brothers with, you know, being educated. They say, oh, black men ain't educated. Oh, black men don't go to school and get real degrees. Oh, black men are entrepreneurs. Oh, black men don't build. But me and, Controver- me and Mr. Controversy doing both of that. But look at how on the positive side, all black men don't get that blessing. But let's say if me and Mr. Con- Controversy robbed somebody or kicked somebody doing some hot shit, 
They would say, oh, see all black men be on that shit. All black men do this and all black men do that when it's on some negative shit. So we don't we don't we don't get that. You know, we don't get that same blessing. And once again, the guillotine just chopped that shit right on off. Right now, the guillotine has just chopped off seven heads because we seven down. And y'all know I deal with a lot of that, that, that tree of life shit. And y'all know to deal with that number seven. And we're going to go right on down to 33. So now the tank about to run over its seventh victim. And I'm going to let this brother go on in. <laughs> boy, I'm telling you, boy. They, Mike Beard, you, 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 you were the man, boy. I'm telling you, because, you know, when coming from the assassin, you know, for, for everybody out there, I'm going to tell you something. I know it's been a big void out there for brothers. They, like, they like to say that brothers don't network. We don't collaborate. We don't network. We don't build. And just like Blackbeard said, we are both college educated. And we are both black men who do not fit that stereotypical way that they like to group us into one. And I've talked about these apes and these savages out here committing crimes and thugs and all this. But the thing that amazes me out of, about it is, like Blackbeard said, we get grouped as a collective unit, whether we're apes, whether we're a, a savage standing outside the, the, the Arab store with a black and mild on our ear, or whether we're in Georgia State, whether we're in any college in all across this country, whether it's Grambling, Bethune, it don't matter what college it is. They're going to group us together as a collective unit as if we are all thugs and apes walking around with a black and mouth and our pants hanging off our ass. But with the white man, oh, so the white man can go out there, commit mass shootings, which we didn't see in Las Vegas. We didn't see the school shooting that just happened in Parkland. We had all of this, the, the Timothy McVeigh's and the Dylan Roof, all of the white men. And they put them as individuals. Yep. They were just long, long gunmen. Long gunmen. But if you take, you got uh, Freddie Gray uh, or Michael Brown, the soon as Michael Brown got shot down in the street, the first thing they did was went to that tape. And they, and they showed him manhandling that little Asian dude in, the, in, the, in that store, in that convenience store. And so by doing that, what they were trying to do was they were looking at it, they put that video on him, but it wasn't about him. It was to show all black men as thugs. Right. All black men as criminals. All black men as apes and savages. But when the white man goes and commits a mass atrocity, like shooting up all them people out there in Vegas at that concert, oh, he gets grouped as an individual person. And and I'm going to say one thing, and then I'm going to go to number eight and nine, and I'm going to combine number eight and nine. But this is the last thing I want to say on this. When I, it was a situation I had in college one time when the police kicked in our door, long story short, and I had a Caucasian male roommate. And, you know, all of us were in the, in the living room and stuff like that. But they went and was searching in everybody's rooms. Now, mind you, in Blackbeard's room, he has books. I mean, it's just books, books, and, and just a bunch of education looking shit. So when they was checking the room, they went to the Caucasian guy and was, you know, telling him stuff about the room and such and such. But he was, oh, no, that's not my room. That's, you know, that's Blackbeard's room. So then they looked at me and I, them, them white boys, them white police had a real greasy look on their face when they saw I had all them books in my room. And that wasn't a white boy's room. So y'all just think about that for a little bit. So so let's now transition into number eight and nine. Number eight says killing Christ. Black Wall Street, Rosewood, etc. The hangings are not random. Choosing the affluent alpha black man to mob up on. Number nine says secret warfare. The covert undercover passive attacks on black men. No longer open racism like the past. The overall fear of the killmonger archetype. Mr. Controversy, go in on both of these. I mean, these, these are so hot, man. This, this, these topics are so deep because I've told a story many times about when I was growing up and my family are a bunch of, you know, they Democrat slaves off the plantation. 
And, you know, they, 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 they believe everything the damn slave master tell them. They, they told them, oh, the Klan is just killing all the black people. And so they passed it down to the children, which was me and my sisters and, and everybody else. And, and, you know, oh, the Klan was just killing all black people. And then I believe that shit. Just like a damn slave, I believe it. But the one thing about Mr. Controversy, I've always been inquisitive. And I never really believe what the fuck I'm told for long. I'm going to go check this shit out. I'm going to go research and find out the truth. So if I did, I went and found, I said, wait a minute. When I, I started doing the research, I ended up really going back to these three sources. And Blackberry, you know where I'm going with this. Right. I remember in school that movie that stuck out in my mind. Or that Jane Pittman story, that story of that black woman who lived to be over a hundred and something years old. And she was an actual slave. She grew up during the time that it was close to the time when they were getting ready to 1865, getting ready to, uh, to release the slaves and free the slaves. And she grew up in that time period and she lived through that whole thing when they actually, when that slave master actually stood up and grouped them all out there and told them to come out there and group together and he held that proclamation in his hands with that top hat on and told them what the government said, that they are forever from this point and forever more free and that you know, they can stay on the plantation if they want to, you know, you you know, but, you know, from this point, y'all are free to go. And one of the scenes in that movie just stuck out in my mind forever. And then that scene about that brother that created that school out there in the woods. And if anybody knows from the country, anybody from the South and from the country, you know what I'm talking about. Them, them, wooden, them wooden shacks out there in the woods yeah. that's elevated off the ground where you can hear your feet yep. when you walk. Because I got country relatives when I grew up 